sometimes we don't always feel that way. Sometimes we feel envy and sometimes we feel jealousy and sometimes we feel anger and sometimes times we feel spite and sometimes we feel all the different emotions that a human being can feel. This is the play of the elements as well. At a certain level we do have a choice how we want to how we want to relate to our life. Whether we always have the willpower to make that choice is a different story because we have all of our mental conditions, subconscious conditions that sometimes prevent us from choosing the healthy dispositions that we'd like to have. We'd like to really feel true, genuine, non-biased love towards all the people in our lives and even all the beings and plants and animals and all the types of sentient beings in our lives. But sometimes we don't always feel that way. Sometimes we feel envy and sometimes we feel jealousy and sometimes we feel anger and sometimes times we feel spite and sometimes we feel all the different emotions that a human being can feel. This is the play of the elements as well. This is fire, spite, and jealousy, and envy, and anger. Where the depressing emotions that sometimes take over us, it's natural to feel sadness, it's natural to feel depressed from time to time. But the difference between feeling sad or even depressed in a healthy way versus in a, a pathological way is that the healthy type of emotions are transient in nature. They have two primary qualities. They're mild and they're transient. That's what, in, from, in Ayurveda, that's how we define health, essentially. It's not that there's an absent of, of emotion, an absent of, of certain types of feelings and symptoms in the body. How can you really even live on planet Earth in a human body and not have all sorts of emotions, all sorts of types of sensations in your physiology? You're going to have gas from time to time. It's not indicative of something's wrong and just the same. You're going to have sometimes some, all the different types of emotions. This is what, what, our, what our lives are like here. And so then when I experience a type of emotion, if I have anger, or maybe that anger used to be uncontrollable and pretty consistent, Maybe some of us experience that in our lives. A lot of us have. Well, but nowadays, far less. And much more mild when it does come. And much more easy, easy to feel deeper into so it can be contained. When our emotions are really uncontrollable, we start to feel scared to feel into them. They feel so powerful, we, might, they, we feel like they might overtake us totally and then we can tail spin into it. So we tend to put up this guard so we're not fully feeling our emotions. And especially I can speak as the male identifying human beings. I can only speak as one of them, but generally I think we can also say the, at this time at least on the planet, us male beings are particularly uh, less skillful in feeling deeply. But I think we're getting better and, and we're changing. And that's, of course, a generalization. What did Drupada say the other night in one of his talks at the Emergent? As soon as I say it, he said it's incorrect. Not this particular thing, but it's a similar type of thing. When you generalize about anything, as soon as I say it, it's incorrect. But in, it's also, there's a, there's a relative truth to it. So anyhow, here we are, sitting down with a body, with a mind, and with all the predicaments of our lives, and sitting down not to get away from the predicaments of our lives, but to really experience the predicament of our lives, whatever it is, it's always changing, 
it's hard to predict, isn't it, what our, which direction our lives are going to turn. We think it's going this way, then sometimes all of a sudden it can go and go that way. And then if I was really attached, let me say it differently, if my mind, not my sat chit ananda, but if, if the mind was really attached to that direction, then when it takes a left turn, which it was going to do either way, it wasn't concerned about what my mind thought about it or how my mind was gripping or grasping onto it, the karmas are going to work. They're going to, that's, what, that's what the word karma means, activity, action. So that activity was going to happen either way. The question is, can I get in alignment with it and be less attached to the mental narratives that the mind is always producing? That's what the mind does. It produces stories. It produces narratives. It produces imagery around things. And so if I know that the mind does that, and I also know that I am not my mind, that that the mind is an experience of the human experience in this particular fashion, in this particular body. Who knows what horoscope I'll have in my next lifetime? I bet it's not going to be exactly the same. And therefore, it's going to be a total different in certain ways, uh, predicament and in t- certain types of different mental patterns. Hopefully so. Because hopefully, since we've been here, since we were young babies, and then we grew up into a, to a teenager, and then... And then we're in now like adult bodies, most of us. Hopefully, we've improved our mind quite a bit since the beginning. That's what we're here to do. We're turning our minds into more diamond-like vehicles that helps us to perceive what we really are, pure intelligence, pure love. But it's not just what we really are. It's what everything really is, the very creation itself. So, here is the card I pulled right before we began, as I sometimes do from this Japji deck. And this is the final stanza of Nanak's Japji, and we'll just use it to get ourselves started this evening. I'm excited this evening because I have some new music to play, which is, all, which is pretty much my favorite thing that ever happens. And it's from the first evening of the immersion. But I'll read the card, and we'll tune in, and we'll move our bodies, we'll work with our minds, we'll use our breath, and we'll use the opportunity to feel good, and to come into a heart space where we can be like, I am cool with my life, it is a beautiful thing, I am grateful exactly for what's going on. And I'm going to make good use of it, whatever it may be. The wind is the guru, Pavan Guru, Panipta. The teacher, the guide, and water is the father. So the wind is the guru, the teacher, the guide, water is the father. The mother is the great and honored earth. Day and night are the two nurses in whose lap the entire world plays. All that is good and all that is bad are equally embraced in the presence of the creation under the command of Dharma. By your actions, you yourself will know how close you are to truth or how far away. Those who meditate in the core of their being who earn themselves through their hard work, Nanak. Their faces are radiant and beautiful, and so very many who are connected with them are liberated too. Take the hands into the prayer pose and inhale. Hey, thanks for watching on YouTube. Best easy way to stay in touch with us, hit the subscribe button here. You'll see our videos when they come up. If you enjoyed this one, hit the like button. It'll help more people see it, help the channel grow. I appreciate you watching.